How not? Yes. All right. Question 11. Look at this information. Two numbers multiply to make zero. Guys? Uh, one of the statements below is true. Tick it. Notice they said one. Make sure you read these questions because sometimes you might have to tick more than one box. Okay? Be careful you know how many boxes to tick. Um, both numbers must be zero. Well, it doesn't have to be both zero, but that would give the right answer. At least one number must be zero. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true. At least one. Exactly one number must be zero. Mm -hmm. No, because that stops this one being true. Neither the number can be zero. It's definitely not the last one. If you've got two non-zero numbers and you multiply them, you're going to get something. So it comes down to how you combine these three. All of them could actually give you a zero answer. So the only one which covers everything is the one in the middle. Okay? So you do have to read all of them. Don't just jump for a straight answer. Uh, two numbers add to make zero. If one number is zero, what's the other number? Zero. zero. It's called the uh, uh, additive identity. It doesn't change the answer. If neither number is zero, give an example of the two numbers. Minus five and minus Five minus five, a number and its negative version. But yeah? It could be also minus five and minus No. Minus five plus minus five is minus ten. Oh, it's got to be opposite oh, signs to cancel to zero. Yes, it says the numbers could be if they're. Okay. All right, this isometric one. Gents, Albert. The thing to think about with this one is how can I bring, if I was to build these blocks, how could I fit them together without breaking the blocks up to make a cuboid? But if I put it on top, that's not a cuboid, it's still this funny zigzaggy pattern. So it must be in the same plane. If I take this and fit it on, so that bit fits to there, that fits to there, that fits to there. We've now got a cuboid coming this way. The alternative would be to fit that one to there, that one to there. That one to there. I'm going to show you. But we've got to think, how does it fit together first? So, think about what happens with them. If I've put this cube on the end of that one, how wide, it, long is it along here? Four. So we know that's going to be four along that side. This fits right into here. So that one actually fits in there. How wide's this cube boy? Still three. So you've got a choice of two ways of drawing it. On the top, it could be three by four. And four down the side, go up. And my tip for you is you do not have to show every single cube. You don't have to show every cube. If you want to see where the split is, the split's like that. The alternative is to do it the other way around, where it's four tall, one, one, two, three, four, by three, four by three, and it's the same thing, just rotated, and the fit would be like that. Okay, so that's how you can do a cuboid. You don't have to draw all the extra lines in, and I would avoid it. If you were to draw a hidden line in this solidly, you lose a mark. Okay, so if you were to put a line in here, I'll put it in in red. If you put a red line in saying, oh, I want to go along here, and that's a cube, so I'd get an edge there. If I show that line, I'd lose the mark. So avoid showing hidden lines or showing extra lines. Just do the outline shape. Aljo, if you're going to keep talking in a minute, I'm going to give you the red ticket because I'm trying to record this, and all I've got in the background is you two mumbling. No, we're nearly at the end of the lesson. Last one, very quickly. How many eighths are there in a quarter? Two. You should know that by drawing quick diagrams. There's a quarter. Split it into eighths. Oh, look, two eighths. If I've got one quarter is two, this is three quarters... That must be three times as big. That's six. The alternative is do the division. Remember my fraction thing was keep, change, flip. Keep the first fraction. Change the second sign and flip the second fraction. 
Multiplication with fractions is straight through, so 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 1 is 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6. Or you could even simplify early and do 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. Answer 6. Okay, we'll stop there and you can...